Okay, Kelsey, we've got it. It's all yours. Okay, fantastic. Well, hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Um, we have a very full agenda today. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started with our introductions. Um, as Joaquin had just said, we tend to do popcorn style. So um, if once I, I can start, um, give your name, your pronouns, if you would like, um, if you like hold a position on the commission um, and then select the next person. Um, if you do not want to participate, that is also okay. Um, you can just say pass. Um, so my name is Kelsey Murray. I use she, her pronouns. I am the vice chair of this commission um, and I live in Ward 4 and I'm going to popcorn to Laura. Hi, I'm Laura Fouts. I'm a member of the commission and uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a resident of Ward 3 and I will pass it to Lisa. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lisa Novak. I use she, her pronouns. I am a member of the commission, of the commission and I live in Ward 3. And I will pass to Rabbi Eli. Hi, I'm Rabbi Eli. Um, and I don't remember what ward I'm in, but I'm not part of the commission. I'm, a, I'm here to um, be part of the discussion tonight. And I'll pass it to um, Debbie. Hi everyone, Debbie Cabrales, she, hers, ella. I am um, an executive director of Centro de Servicios para Campesinos. So it translates to the Farm Worker Service Center. Um, and I actually live in Woodburn and I'm here to, to have a conversation with y'all tonight. I'll pass it off to Jody. Hey everyone, my name is Jody. I live in Ward 1, she, her pronouns. Um, just a resident. Um, who's left? Taylor? Lane? Hi there, uh, I'm Taylor and I am just here to be an observer tonight and to show my support for the ceasefire resolution going through. And uh, Samaya, can I pass to you? Hello, uh, I'm Samia Foster. I'm a resident of Salem since 1993. And uh, hello, and I'm here um, just to take part in the discussion and give my support to those who are here for that reason. I will uh, pass it on to Katie Moore. Hi, I'm uh, Katie. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I'm a resident of Salem and a student here as well. And I'm here to express my support for the ceasefire resolution. All right. Um, it looks like Leaf is the only person left virtual. Leaf, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Leaf. Um, I'm in Ward 4, um, she, her pronouns. And yeah, I'm also just here to support the ceasefire resolution. Awesome. Well, welcome our, our virtual guests. We'll now move to person. Um, Joaquin, do you want to get us started? Sure. Um, good evening, everybody. Welcome, guests. Um, my name is Joaquin McKiff, and I am a commissioner on this commission, and I chair our community engagement. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to this evening. Um, oh, I guess that's me. Hello, everybody. My name is Robert Marshall. I am a resident of Ward 2, and I am a member of the Human Rights Commission. I'm Kathy Ostrand Function. I live in South Salem. I'm a member of the Human Rights Commission. Uh, David? Hi, my name is David Reinholz. I'm a member of the Human Rights Commission. I'm a resident of uh, Polk County. Sure. My name is Gretchen Bennett. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the staff liaison to the commission. <laughs> My name is Kira Pressey. Um, I use she/her pronouns. I live in Ward Five, and I'm an applicant to the commission. 
I will pass to you. Oh. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, my name is Erin. I am visiting, but I'm on the place review board. Um, hi everyone, my name is Sabrina Abu Khayed, and I'm um, born and raised in Salem, um, 42 and a thousand years in the and yeah. I'm Farah, I'm a resident of Salem my whole life, and Sabrina's sister, and also <laughs> a daughter of the Palestinian immigrants, and now I'm here to show support for the peace guys. Um, I'm Jasenia Salinas. I am a resident of Salem since 2015. I'm a daughter of Mexican and Nicaraguan immigrants, and um, my pronouns are they, them. Uh, I'm Ben, a uh, resident of Salem. I'm Margaret Stevens. I live in Ward 1 and a long time resident of Salem. Here to support ceasefire resolution. Um, Jordan, uh, he did pronouns, um, same, just here to support uh, the ceasefire. My name is Anam, and I'm Palestinian from Ward 1, and I'm here to support a ceasefire resolution. My name is Janti Yaku. I'm a Salem resident. I'm also a dual citizen Jordanian American, uh, here to support the ceasefire resolution. Wait, one more. Oh, one more? Person joining now. Oh, the name showing is F E I phone Kelsey. <clears throat> Iron F E. Yep. Okay. Um, F E I phone. Oh my gosh! Hi. <laughs> Do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> um, I'm Fern Espinosa. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, welcome. Um, okay, I think that's everyone has introduced themselves. Cool. Okay. Yes. Lovely. All right. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and move into public comment. Um, commission members, um, you should have gotten a packet of public comments received. So hopefully you have the opportunity to read through um, all of them. I know a couple of um, people who submitted them are here in person slash virtual. Um, so I guess at this moment, I'm wondering if there are any additional public comments or, um, anyone wants to share. Um, and, oh, Gretchen, um, because we are under, we have a lot to cover tonight. Um, we're going to keep a limit of three minutes per person per speaker. Um, so just be mindful of that so we can make sure to fit everything that we need to on our agenda today. Very good. And I'll add on to that, Kelsey, if you don't mind. And what I'm going to do is just use hand signals and I'll, I'll interrupt if I, at the end verbally. So just apologies in advance for that. Great. But is it, yeah, like Kelsey said, is anybody hoping to speak tonight in the public comment portion of the meeting? Several hands are going up here. Anybody? She'll begin here. Yeah, let, let's um, alternate between uh, in person and then virtual. Perfect. Okay, so Very first good. person um, in person. Sounds good. Um, I saw a hand over here. We'll go this way if that's all right. Oh, there are more people coming through. Welcome. My name. Living for the Human Rights Commission? Yeah. And you found it? You want to hit start when she begins well, to talk? Well, we'll wait for folks to sit down. Hi. Some seats available here for you. Uh, we've just gone okay. through um, introductions, but I think we're going to start the public comment portion. Sure. And there's chairs up here. People are welcome to be up at the table, too. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> Okay, once everyone gets settled, we'll go ahead and start with the first public comment. So, uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for giving me the chance to speak today. I'm going to speak on the ceasefire resolution for Palestine by sharing a quote from a well-known Palestinian journalist in Gaza named Bisan Oda. Before the war, 
Misan was a filmmaker who did exposés on the beauty of Palestine, but since the beginning of the current genocide, Bisan has been documenting the horrendous war crimes of the Israeli military. So I'll now share, share a transcript of one of her latest updates. Yesterday, some people who are displaced from their homes in the north to the south of Gaza Strip succeeded to go back to the north of Gaza Strip. They took advantage of the busy military Israeli aviation and the Iranian response to the Israeli attack, and they sneaked. They infiltrated to the north of Gaza Strip. She laughs a little bit. The next day, some people tried to do the same. They tried to go with their families to the checkpoints between the south and the north to go back to the north Gaza Strip. But the Israeli tanks bombed them, causing injuries and at least one woman to be killed while trying to go back to their homes. Do you still believe that Israel's main problem is to release the hostages? Israel's main problem is to take over the land and to prevent people from going back to their homes to return. And it's not the first time. A lot of people tried to return to their homes back in the 1948 in the Nakba when they were displaced to the West Bank and to the Gaza Strip, and they did not succeed. Israel is doing the same now. Some people succeeded, but only because Israel was not awake enough as they were hiding or trying to defend the attack but some other people got killed because they tried. Israelis' only concern is to cut the north and the south of Gaza Strip and prevent anyone from going back. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go a little virtual now. Jody, I believe you had your hand raised. Elsie, can I interrupt really quickly? I wanted to acknowledge something. Debbie, I don't think I had the opportunity to predict and communicate about the schedule and the public comment. Um, and I just wanted to check in and confirm if you're comfortable with the ordering of the agenda. We have the public comment and then we would jump into our conversation with you before proceeding and just make sure you're comfortable with that. Yeah, that's okay. I'm here. I'm available till seven. So I think that should be enough time. <laughs> You're very kind. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And if I may, because there are, there are no people who have come in uh, to this space that uh, when you receive public comment and we have an agenda item that will proceed, what I think that most of us are here to talk about for our guests. And so yeah. I just want to acknowledge that too, that yeah. welcome to stay for all of it. But. That's right. Very good. Okay, thank you. Anybody on the virtual Zoom that would like to provide public comment? Yeah, Jody, if you want to go ahead. Hi, everyone. Um, I would just like to start with the land acknowledgement. Um, we are gathered on the land of the Santiam Kalapuya peoples, and I just would like to acknowledge that Oregon was founded on the violent displacement and attempted erasure of indigenous peoples. Only from this perspective can we continue to build on our conversations tonight regarding a Salem ceasefire resolution among the most basic of resolutions. May we commit ourselves to the process of dismantling all ongoing systems of settler colonialism and to actively support the movement for indigenous rights, protection of ancestral lands, and protection of this natural world. Um, it is not really my job to educate all of you very qualified human rights commissioners and people on the council about the history and the injustices against Palestine and the Palestinian people. There are plenty of qualified historians, such as Edward Said, Ilan Pepe, Norman Finkelstein, and Dr. Angela Y. Davis. Um, there are easily digestible independent news stations like Mondawise, Middle East Eye, Al Jazeera, The Indy, reporting without the sway of deep corrupted pockets. For some lighter reading, might I suggest the first book I read about the Palestinian struggle and the resistance, They Call Me a Lioness, by then 16-year-old Ahed Tamimi and Al Jazeera journalist Dina Takruri. The point I'm trying to make, and I'm sure a lot of us are going to make tonight, is that we are all involved in this highly broadcasted and widely viewed genocide of Palestinians. It is not really difficult for you, me, or a five-year-old to press play on an audiobook, pick up a book, connect with a Gazan on Instagram or TikTok. 
As a healthcare worker, I'm an acute care and critical care physical therapist. I'm very familiar with patients in the hospital setting. What I have watched, heard, and seen for the last six months are deliberate targeted destruction and murder against hospitals, healthcare workers, civilians, and everyone that is just in Palestine. I'm appalled at the at the um, deliberate dismemberment, sorry, not dismemberment, disablement and mangling of Palestinian bodies at the hands of untrained and unqualified um, Israeli soldiers who call themselves soldiers. Jody, pardon, 30 more seconds. Sure. The IRC reports that 100% of Gazan populations are at imminent risk of um, failing and states that Gaza is the deadliest place for civilians in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Um, we'll move into um, in person if there is another comment. Did you? Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Anam, and I am a Palestinian living in Ward One. I am here today because you are drafting wording for the mayor and the city council about a ceasefire resolution. I have seen many Israeli aggressions towards Palestinians in Gaza and in the West Bank in my lifetime. I've been to protests in 2000, 2002, 2004, 2005, 2008, 2012, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2018, and 2021. And now here we are watching a truly devastating genocide happening live right in front of us. We have witnessed the most horrific scenes unfold over the past six months at the hands of the Israeli occupiers and the U.S. every day. Every day there is something that we once thought was unimaginable. On top of the over 30,000 killed, we have seen how many journalists, healthcare workers, first aid responders, foreign aid volunteers, mosques, hospitals, schools, and churches have been targeted over and over again. I keep wondering what horrific act will be the limit for the US and what's the limit for you to stand against this wrong? Is it when women and children are killed in an unprecedented way? Is it when hospital after hospital is sieged? Is it when people are killed in the hundreds at aid sites? At how many journalists dead? At how many healthcare workers dead? At how many foreign aid workers dead? Because of all those, because all of these things continue, have and continue to happen. And I'm telling you today that wording is very crucial. And we are not only asking for a permanent ceasefire, we are asking this commission to pass a resolution for unrestricted entry of humanitarian assistance to Gaza, calls for the restoration of access to basic necessities like food, water, electricity, and medical services to the Gazan people, for you to denounce the U.S. complicity in Israel's military campaign in Gaza and the West Bank and calls for an end to all U.S. military aid to Israel. We urge you to call for an end to Israeli apartheid and acts of genocide against the Palestinian people, which violate international law and affirms the Palestinian right to self-determination, sovereignty, and refugee return to their land. And lastly, the commitment to support all of Salem's residents and condem condemn anti-Arab racism, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and all forms of racism, xenophobia, and discrimination. These are all crucial. Anything short of that, there's no reason for it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there anyone virtual who uh, would like to make a com public comment? All right, seeing none, we'll move to in-person. Is there anyone else in person who would like to make a public comment? We got some hands back here. Yeah, um, I don't know who I saw first. Go ahead. Hi, um, yeah, my name is Sabrina. I don't have anything prepared, but I just wanted to highlight that what we're seeing now is a culmination of 75 years of persecution against Palestinians. Um, before October 7th, before the latest escalation, um, there are 6 million Palestinian refugees registered with the United Nations 
um, our population is 13 million. And so almost half of our entire population are refugees. who We don't have the right to return to our homes. Um, meanwhile, you know, anyone that's Jewish, you know, um, they have the automatic right by Israel to, you know, gain citizenship there. Meanwhile, people whose houses are standing literally there, who literally have the keys to their houses from which they were forced out of in 1947, they are not allowed to go back. Um, and this is just part of the racist, um, oppressive, and discriminatory system um, that Israel has upheld since its founding in 1948. And um, that is just one example. Palestinians have been persecuted on a daily basis uh, for the past 75 years, especially since 1967 when the occupation began. This is the longest standing occupation in modern history. Um, and the reason I believe why we are here where we are today is because for so long, we have allowed Israel to act with impunity. For so long, we have allowed them to get away with clear violations of international law, um, clear, you know, what are clear war crimes. Um, the occupation itself is illegal by the United Nations. Um, that was made clear by the United Nations shortly after it began in 1967. Yet 50 years later, it is still ongoing. Of course, there's a matter of the settlements, which are colonies, their Palestinians, you know, are forced off of their homes, even upon their internationally recognized Palestinian land. And um, then they're pushed out and um, uh, they are replaced with Jewish people from all over the world. Um, so this is ethnic cleansing, this is settler colonialism. And as, you know, citizens or um, people of this country who um, pay taxes and who live here is especially important and is incumbent on us that we demand that our um, government no longer um, allows um, Israel to get away with this and allows the tax with the community. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, great. Any, anyone virtual? Rabbi Ali? Sure. I just, uh, <clears throat> I really appreciate the comments that have been made so far. And um, I, I agree um, with, with those comments. I also um, just want to express some surprise. This is not the meeting that I was told was happening tonight. <laughs> um, so, mm -hmm. um, so I, I was under communicated and I'm curious to know how to be better informed about what meeting I'm stepping into. Um, Gretchen, this is not what you described as happening tonight. Oh, I sincerely I apologize. So oh, I apologize. No, you're good. Okay, I apologize to both of you. We'll unpack that when we get time and make sure that I'm I'm giving the information that's helpful to you. Okay, yeah. I mean, my so I submitted a written statement, and I just want to raise that based on other cities that are passing these resolutions or you know, trying to pass such resolutions around the country is that there, there is a question about why any city in America needs to pass a policy about something that's happening 7,000 miles away that might directly affect the safety of people within, this, within that city. Most namely the, the Jewish and Muslim communities um, within cities can be affected by these resolutions. Um, and the one of the comments I would say so far that's come up and many of the comments that, I, that I've heard come up is, for example, saying that you want to oppose anti-Semitism. I wanna know who gets to define what anti-Semitism is. Do Jews get to define it or do you get to define it? Um, so saying anti, yeah, see you, so anti, or anti or Islamophobia. I think Muslims get to tell the world what Islamophobia is. We don't get to tell Muslims what Islamophobia is. Um, so I, I think there's many other things going on. There, 
the, in the, in the, um, the statement, as, as I said, I am an and also thinker. So everything that people said this morning, so far, I, I agree with, um, there's also a lot that has not been said that it is a lot that, that needs to be said if, if in a resolution that's actually going to promote safety and integrity of, of this community, um, in my opinion. So that's all I'd like to say. Kelsey, if I may, I wonder if we would want to pause public comment and switch gears and have a conversation with Debbie because we understand Debbie needs to leave at seven and then we can return to this conversation. Okay. Okay. Just, it's just a proposal. I want to make sure we honor yeah. that part of the agenda. I think there's just one more person. Oh, Murphy. forgive oh, me. Okay. Two? I wanted to go. I do have to sign up beforehand. Or? You don't have to okay. sign up beforehand. I'm, Thank you for checking. So we've got two people interested in public comment. Three. Can I just ask you a clarifying? I'm actually a Kaiser resident. Am I allowed to? Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you for checking. Answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. That would be nine minutes of comment. Debbie, are you? How you? How you doing? Okay, thank you. I appreciate your understanding. Very good. Okay, let's, um, why don't we start with you? Thank you very much. Um, again, my name's Margaret, I live in Salem. And um, the question was just raised, what could this resolution do? Um, potential resolution. Um, it may seem like a small thing, we're, you know, not a huge city, but I believe everything we do to stop this genocide counts. Um, I agree with the statements that were said before. I also want to say that I did visit Palestine in 2002, um, and I was not able to go to Gaza. There's no, it's really hard to get there across Israel, but we did manage to visit Jerusalem Bethlehem, Beit Sahur, and Ramallah. We went through the checkpoints. They're ugly. <laughs> this is what Palestinians have to live through all the time. They can be stuck at checkpoints for a day. Okay, this is an apartheid state. We must oppose an apartheid state. We oppose South Africa's apartheid, and after years, we finally got rid of it. So ceasefire and dismantle apartheid. Those are my additional comments. Thank you. And would you remind me of your name? Uh, my name is uh, Logan Stewart. Logan, I live in Ward 5. Okay. Um, I'm going to make my testimony short, but I'm going to keep it very simple. Uh, when I was 13 years old, uh, I opened up YouTube and I got to see a video of a teenager in Palestine get shot in the head by the IMF. I was 13 years old. At the age of 16, I got to see other videos on Twitter of people being forced out of their homes, people being physically abused at checkpoints. I wanna stress this, I was 13 years old and I could go online and see that by accident. This has been going on for decades. This has been going on since 1948. It has almost been a hundred years that this has been going on. This city was founded over a hundred years ago. There's been decades to make statements on human rights violations. There's been decades to make statements on crimes against humanity. I frankly think statements should have been made during the Great March of Return when Palestinians who were trying to go home were massacred by the IDF. A person in a wheelchair was hit with a tank shell trying to go home after being forced out of their home decades ago. And now, in the year 2024, Gaza, a place with over 2 million people, is on the verge of starving to death because one of because the most moral army on earth has blockaded all food, water, and medicine. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I'm not going to use flowery language. There is an actual genocide going on, being propelled by a state that our government nationally has been supporting since its very founding. And we need to make a direct statement against us, against apartheid. We need to make a statement for a ceasefire, thank you. And most importantly, 
we need to very directly make this statement as soon as humanly possible. There are two million people in Gaza who are running out of time. Thank you. Uh, Jordan. Jordan, thanks. Go right ahead. Uh, so the question is raised: Why should we, as Salem, as Oregonians, care about a war? You know, seven thousand miles away. Our bombs aren't falling seven thousand miles away. The bombs that are two point three million dollars of Salem tax money. Our bombs aren't falling. Are falling on the Gazans. Are falling on the Palestinians. So that's why we should care because it's our money and our tax dollars as Americans funding this brutal genocide funding this brutal occupation and as Oregonians we have a duty to stand up for everyone and that includes stopping our tax dollars from fighting or from going to this to this really state. Thank you. Is anybody who hoped to make public comment? Okay. Um when we get to the proclamation um part of the agenda, um I'll open it up again. Um, so if anyone else wants to give a comment during that, they can. Um, but we're going to go ahead and move forward. Thank you, everyone, so far for sharing. Um, we have our consent calendar. So I'm wondering if there is a motion um, to approve the agenda and the minutes from last meeting. I move to approve the agenda and the minutes from last month's meeting. All right. Lisa has motioned. Is there a second? Okay, Miss Kathy. Ah, sorry, Laura. Kathy beat you. No. <laughs> all right, Kathy has seconded. Um, all those in favor, say aye. Thumbs up. Yay. Thumbs up. Who? Any dissent? Say boo. Beautiful. All right. Um, so moving on to our action and discussion items. Um, Debbie, thank you so much for being patient. Um, so we would like to welcome you. Um, if you want to reintroduce yourself um, and then kind of why you are here and uh, talking about uh, sanctuary cities. Yes, thank you so much. Um, just for the record, Debbie Cabrales, Debbie Cabrales, she, hers, ella. <clears throat> and I am the executive director of Centro de Servicios para Campesinos. Um, and I'm here to have a conversation around situations when they occur um, especially with people who speak indigenous languages. I don't know if Gretchen wants to add anything. Debbie, thank you. Yeah, I wanted to remind everybody that per our discussion coming out of last year's community belonging survey, we noted higher rates of indigenous communities not reporting hate or discrimination. And so we wanted, we're embarking upon an inquiry to try to learn more about what are those barriers in the way of reporting discrimination? And um, so we had, you might remember at a previous meeting, we had brainstormed some questions for folks who work in the field like Debbie. And those questions, um, when situations happen and people do not report, do you have a sense of the related circumstances or influential factors? Are there things that, that the police department, that the city of Salem can do to try to help welcome in reports. How do we build trust? How do we talk with people um, who may be experiencing discrimination and have reluctance to report? So those are the questions that we sent to Debbie in advance for discussion. And I know it's gonna feel a little compressed tonight, Debbie, I appreciate your time. So I wonder no, if, you wanna, if you wanna make comments on that respect or if you'd like the commissioners to ask you those questions. No, I have, so I just wanna, just for the record, I am not, Indig an indigenous person. I do not speak an indigenous language, but I do work with the indigenous community. Um, and um, I did speak with um, Pedro Lucas, who is a, um, um, he's from Guatemala and we spoke together. We, we came up with the answers together. And um, so this is the, what I'm answering is not just my, what I think and what I, belief, but also coming from him as part of the Guatemalan community. Um, and so coming to answer the first question, when situations happen, people do not report. Do you have a sense of the related circumstances of, or influential factors? Um, more than anything, we believe that a lot of people aren't reporting because they don't speak Spanish or English. 
um, and they don't know how to report or where to go to report. Um, another thing is that a lot of people do know that they're being discriminated um, against, but they don't know what to do. So there's they're left with not not knowing what to do, where to go, um, or even what to say back to the person who who's discriminating them. Um, and they don't have the knowledge or to know their rights. And uh, Pedro mentioned that he believed that um, people would take advantage of that, of people not knowing their rights. And so that was kind of just like the the um, conversation that him and I had around that question. I don't know if anyone wants to comment or has additional questions specifically to this first question, but I'm I'm here to have a conversation with y'all. Um, yeah, thank you, Debbie. Um, and thank you for what you share. Um, I think one question that I would have is, I know that when, for example, Santiago Ventura Morales used to work at the Oregon Law Center, there were a lot of, uh, who, who was a Mexico gentleman who lived in Oregon, um, there were a lot of efforts on the part of OLC to do New Year Rights campaigns and help provide pro bono legal services um, to our indigenous migrant communities. Um, this was also a project taken up by um, the Northwest Justice Project. But as a city, uh, Debbie, I guess my question is, you know, what are your recommendations for recommendations that we can make to council and to our, our city staff to help facilitate that process or to be, um, well, I'll leave it there. What, what are your insights from a city perspective? I also know that you're a city councilor in Woodburn. So yes. what, uh, what insights do you have in that area? So thank you, yeah. And so I work closely with OLC and with Northwest Worker Justice Project. And so um, a lot of this, so my suggestion for the city is of Salem is work closer with CBOs to be able to get more of this programming um, funding available for us to be able to do these um, know your rights in specific indigenous languages. As we know, a lot of the people we we know that a lot of the times people um, and we've had conversations with um, government agencies who need help translating um, and interpretation. And although they have the money, they don't they they it's expected for it to come out of someone's heart to help and translate, but not get anything in return monetary wise, which with this, with um, the Guatemalan com um, community there, and even myself with Spanish to English, I am, we're all more than welcome to do that. It's just a matter of having the resources available. And if the resources are there, then help create a program where people from the community can get certified trans translated or certification to get um, trans to be translate translators to be able to offer those services um, for community and to be able to provide um, the additional support to to the city. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Um, if, is it, if it's okay with y'all, I can go to the next question. Perfect. So. Um, the next question is, are there things that the police department and the city's human rights commission do to help reduce barriers? With this question, I really want to emphasize what happened in Florida with the situation um, with um, Virgilio Aguilar Mendez, who was 19, and he was charged with manslaughter over um, an officer having a heart attack. I don't know if many of you are familiar with us, with what happened in Florida, but it was very unfortunate they were wanting to charge him with manslaughter due to the fact that he didn't stop because he didn't know English or Spanish. And while the officer was arresting him, he got a heart attack and he passed. From my understanding, he passed. <clears throat> and so they were charging him with that. So I think learning from that situation what not to do and understand that a lot of people from um, the indigenous communities do not speak English or Spanish and aren't aware of when a police officer is telling them to stop, what if they're sitting there not doing anything and they're not understanding why they're being pulled over, or why why they are asking to stop to stop walking, and they they don't have the knowledge of understanding, 
what why that's happening and so it's more than anything I think and again Pedro and I had a conversation about educating our community um we want we want information given to us um on how to report and what are their rights especially when they're being discriminated um contract or hire people from the community again to to um serve as translators and interpreters, but be able to get paid for that service, to for that work. Create programs <clears throat> will, when they can get certified to become an interpreter. Um, and understand that people from a deaf, and I'm speaking specifically for the Guatemalan community, just because that's who I spoke to and related to this conversation, um, that they don't all speak the same indigenous language. And just in Woodburn alone, there's one, two, three, four, five, um, five indigenous languages that he told me that are spoken in Woodburn. And that's that might not be all. So I just wanted everyone to be aware of that, that that's what's happening in our communities. And the Guatemalan um, community is growing and more indigenous communities are growing as well. And that's kind of like what we're thinking about building that trust between the police department and the, and, um, the city human rights <clears throat> commission to help reduce those barriers. While that person is getting seated, I think I'd also add Debbie in addition to your comments that, um, and I, I've said it before uh, to the commission, but you know, there, there are 60,000 indigenous migrants in Oregon that come from our, from our communities. Um, and it's not just diversity of languages and cultural experiences, but intra differences. So, for example, my father comes from a Nahuatl community in, in the mountains of Guerrero, Mexico, right? And the Nahuatl that we speak is different from the Nahuatl spoken in Puebla mm -hmm. or in Veracruz. And so, you, would, you, not, you can't even just less rest on your laurels, as it were thinking you're speaking to one Nahuatl person. There's no one Nahuatl person. There's no one Nahuatl experience. The languages that we speak are diverse, even within our communities. So I just wanted to add that clarified point as well. well. Thank you so much. And so for the next question, how we can build trust is definitely just to, for people not to assume that everyone speaks Spanish or English. Um, treat them like human, like human beings. Um, and not like people that just don't understand. Um, for people to have patience, a lot of patience when dealing or with, I'm sorry, not dealing with, when interacting and having conversations and um, being a part of the community, as we know. Um, and educate police officers of how to have an understanding um, that some people just don't have, don't, have the knowledge um, of an or understanding of what is happening. So when they people get pulled over or when they're being stopped or when they're being asked to stop, um, they don't understand why 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 they're asking to be stopped. Um, and then hire uh, um, police officers who speak indigenous languages, have interpreters um, on call with that speak indigenous languages so then they can be able to translate when it, during the situation and also understand the culture there's different culture when it comes to people from different parts of the world and um different indigenous communities understand their beliefs and um when there's situations that are being reported when there's a situation where there where something happened and it is being reported oftentimes they believe that police officers don't do anything about it and it makes the indigenous community feel that if they do call the police and report that they won't do anything or they won't they aren't um they don't believe them and um when there are events like for the specifically for indigenous communities or what but when it's open to the public to be involved and get involved and participate because that's I from the conversation that Pedro and I had that's how tr trust can be built
Debbie, thank you. I don't know if any of the commissioners have any questions or comments from those remarks. That's what I was just going to ask. Does anyone have any questions Kelsey. for Debbie? I also want to, we had a couple people come in late and it might be helpful if you want to introduce yourself. Sure. My name is Robert Dowd. I'm the Acting Incapacity Lieutenant of the Salem Police Department. And I currently serve here on the uh, as a liaison for the Human Rights Commission. And then uh, I work with the uh, Community Action Unit and the Homeless Services Team as part of the community engagement section of the police department. Thank you. Would you like to introduce yourself? No, okay, very good. Well, Debbie, I guess we can go to question number four, and I'm grateful. I'm taking good notes, and I'm learning from your comments. Thank you so much for these insights so far. Yeah, of course. And so the last question is how can we talk with people who may experience discrimination and have reluctancy to report? Um, building trust. Having conversations, getting to know people, getting to know um, our community, our culture, our beliefs, um, creating programs through CBO in with CBOs, um, so community-based organizations, where oftentimes our community members feel safe to talk about situations that have came up where they're being discriminated or something has happened and they haven't been, they don't feel com comfortable reporting. Um, collaborating with CBOs to be able to have those conversations um, and um, collaborating with groups from the community to be able to have these conversations. Now, I know that in Woodburn, there is, um, I believe, two committees um, from Guatemala that they meet. And so I, I spoke to Pedro because he, he helps run those. And so this was what came up. And then I do have a couple notes of things he did mention about, for example, um, the Hermiston, I believe the Hermiston Police Department spoke to um, the um, Guatemalan consulate asking for help with interpretation um, because there was a lot of discrimination going around um, within in jobs. And so that's also something that um, y'all can do is reach out to the Guatemalan consulate, have conversations with them, get to know them, maybe go up to Seattle and see what it's like to um, go through the process. We here at Centro de Servicios para Campesinos and Pecun, we were able to help people, um, which we are still able to do, help them um, create appointments. And then the consulate of Guatemala actually was able to come here and we were able to help a lot of our community members get um, passports and um, IDs. So they were able to get um, those. So when they are being asked for an, an, an identification, they're able to provide that. Um, and then also Pueblo Unido is a really good um, organization that they have interpreters with more than 12 languages. And there is going to be an event in September in Woodburn that um, the one of the committees from Guatemala is hap is creating. And so if it is open to the public, I, I suggest for everyone to, to go and be a part of that and, and participate. Thank you, Debbie. That, the consulate idea, that never even came to my mind. I think there's a lot of great opportunities for some community partnerships um, to help this. Yes, um, definitely. Any questions for Debbie? This is Kathy. I don't. I don't have any questions. I just want to say thank you for coming tonight and sharing. That's that's very helpful information for for me to hear. Yeah, of course. And if y'all have any additional questions that rise that can come up as you're driving home and just thinking about the conversation today, please feel free to reach out to me. And if I don't have the answer to your question, I'll make sure to connect you to the right person that can give you um, an answer. I have two questions. Yeah, well, at the risk of talking too much, as I always do, um, two things, uh, Debbie, come to mind. It, the first is more of a comment, the second is a question. Um, you, you talked a lot about trust and legibility, 
And, and I think one thing I'd like, um, as much as I do talk, I've tried to be more facilitator in this process and not inject my own personal uh, perspectives. But I, I will say that something that I struggle with a lot is indigeneity outside of the North American context is often collapsed into just being Mexican or just being Guatemalan. And there is not a legibility there. And I, I appreciated you highlighting the, including our pueblos in indigenous programming at the city, because that is not something that happens at all. And, and quite frankly, in all transparency, that's something that's resisted from a lot of tribal communities in the United States. You know, they're, they're Mexican, they're not, they're not native, they're not indigenous. And so that there's a lot of solidarity that's not happening there. And so I appreciated that perspective because it's something that we, from within the indigenous community, try to really advocate for and to change. And so I appreciate it. That's more of a comment that you're free to react to it if you'd like. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, it's, it takes more than just um, translating flyers and like inviting the community. Another thing a lot of people don't understand that don't speak other languages other than English is that sometimes the way it's translated sometimes doesn't translate correctly and it could be interpreted differently. So when you are seeking translation to make sure that it is someone from that community that is doing that, just because it, it could be, we could offend someone without even meaning to and wanting to. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not something we would want. But thank you. I appreciate your, and I agree with you, Joaquin. So thank you. And so if you may, if you let me, my question then is this, um, part, of, part of our process, which has been several months now, kind of responding to the community feedback that we've gotten on this, on this challenge in particular, has been questions around uh, citizenship and status. Um, I, I think it's unfair to confuse the two, but I think it's often true that our indigenous migrant communities are undocumented. And there's, there's a lot of distrust with not just law enforcement, but institutions, government agencies, and warranted. Vigilio is, is a case that you mentioned in Florida, in, in Jacksonville, Florida. Santiago uh, was convicted of murder in Oregon and sentenced to jail and served three to four years of his term before they realized he didn't even speak any Spanish. And that was in the 80s. Uh, so this isn't, this isn't, I know him. I mean, he's, he's alive. This isn't ancient history. You know, it's a family friend. Um, bringing that back to the citizenship conversation, um, we have been exploring introducing languages to change city revised code, which are our governing laws here in the city, to be more specific uh, and protective of our undocumented neighbors. Um, and many of us live in, in mixed status households, so this is an important issue to us personally. Um, you know, Oregon sanctuary law is very old. It was the first state in the country to have a sanctuary policy of non-cooperation with federal agents, 1986. Um, Teresa Alonso Leon, who's a former state rep, who is herself an indigenous woman from Michoacan, really made that much more robust um, in the last few years. Now, my understanding, Gretchen, this is a bi-directional question, which is we received in our packet in advance of this meeting, what I think is language from staff. Mm -hmm. Is that from legal counsel? Or is that from you? Yeah, it's me paraphrasing from legal counsel, correct. So thank you. So we've been exploring with the city attorney uh, possible um, changes to city code to be more inclusive. And before I ask my question, I, I'd like to ask Gretchen to read uh, the third or fourth bullet point. Um, or I can't, if you like. I, don't know if I, don't I should have it. it. It'll just take me a second to That's find. Right. I apologize. Oh, here we go. So, um, thank you, Gretchen. Staff, meaning the city attorney, understanding of the idea by the HRC is to prohibit discrimination of an individual that is occurring because the person is not lawfully in the United States, or at least does not have a lawful right to work in the United States. You mentioned employment discrimination a few minutes ago. The city council could amend chapter 97. We've had success with this in the past. We included housing as protected class in Salem. It's the first in Oregon, one of the first in the country to protect housing as a protected class, to prohibit that type of discrimination. But it would need to be specifically tailored to exempt 
from the prohibition lawful acts such as not hiring or firing an employee because of the individual because the individuals not have a legal right to work. Now, I always like your input on that. Uh, I think this is something that we'd like to explore, um, given the conversation we've been having the last few months. But what's your sense of the utility of that, um, or just what are your reactions to that? Because that's something that is top of mind to this commission in particular. Yeah. So the work that we do here at Centro really is closely related to discrimination within um, jobs. Yep. Um, specifically wage theft, sexual harassment, things like that. We work closely with NWJP. We used to have an attorney, shared attorney here that that took on cases like that. No one should be um, discriminated against for not speaking the language or not having that status. Um, you know, here in Woodburn, I they don't, law enforcement does not work with ICE. They And I make sure that... Um, when someone is pulled over that they're not asked about any of their status whatsoever. And so I believe that, I mean, people shouldn't be discriminated or being fired or not hired due to that. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for the work that you do, especially our communities in Woodburn. I, I guess what I'm getting from your conversation, from this conversation is, is a legal change was also a policy change, right? We have to make it mm -hmm. illegal in Salem to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that being firing or not hiring on the basis of status while also yeah. empowering our, our communities through language services. Because if I admit that I don't have a legal status and I'm not hired or I'm fired as a consequence of that, I didn't understand the question or couldn't communicate or telegraph that in a, in a, in a material way because of the language barrier, that would be a problem too. Yes, that one definitely. Doing? Yes. That concludes my questions, Your Honor. <laughs> Anyone else have any other questions? It is almost 7, 7 p.m. Okay. Well, Debbie, thank you so much. We really appreciate you taking your time to spend your evening with us. Um, and we'll let you, let you know if you have any more uh, questions. Yes, please, please. Um, Gretchen has my contact info. I'm more than happy to meet with anyone if anyone has any additional questions or would like to come and see the work that we're doing. So thank you so much. Thank you, Debbie. Yeah, have a good night, everyone. Bye. All right. Okay. Um, last last call for say anything about Sanctuary City uh, updates, questions, comments. All right. Seeing none. Um, we'll move forward, but also kind of backwards to uh, the proclamation related to a ceasefire in Gaza. Um, so we ended with um, comments, but I wanted to reopen to see if there are any additional public comments that um, folks want to make. Uh, I'm sorry, remind me how you pronounce your name, Samia? That is correct, thank okay. you. Oh, sorry. Should I go ahead? <clears throat> okay, I'm a not a very good speaker at all. So I will be very brief. Um, almost exactly 60 years ago, uh, Malcolm X, who was a great speaker, um, uh, said, I'm a Muslim. This was after he left the Nation of Islam. But if we don't set aside our religious differences, whether you are a Christian or any other religion, then all we will do is disagree. And so I'm a Muslim, but I'm also a settler. I'm a colonizer. And um, that's not said out of guilt. It's just a, a historical reality. And so when I see uh, what has what happened uh, to Palestinians since even before 1948 and related to where we are here in Oregon, and um, what has been going on essentially since 1492, this is a chance for us to unite around something that is for progress against the, the forces that are against progress, regardless of religion. And so, yes, it is about um, struggling against anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, um, and 
uh, just to wrap up, um, on many weekends and at other times, uh, it's not safe for me to, to leave my apartment anymore in Salem. Uh, there are so many far right rallies uh, around the state capitol. And um, there's you know what's called Christian nationalism that's on the rise. And these are, you know, this is like the harvest. These are the fruits of uh, centuries of settler colonialism. And we see it happening in real time in, in Israel, um, the rise of the far right, s settler violence, guns, uh, burning people's homes. And, uh, and so I think this is a very personal thing for people who live in Salem as, as far as reflecting um, like who we are and what we value and, and, and who's safe here, um, regardless of religion. So um, that was all that I had to add. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other public comment? I didn't hear you, Kelsey. What did you say? No, that's a that's okay. Um, any other public comment? Okay. If anything else comes up, feel free to raise your hand or jump in. Um, we'll continue with this conversation. Um, commissioners, I'm wondering um, if folks could share their thoughts. I would love to hear from um, everyone. Um, especially if you don't speak that often at our meetings, because um, every every voice is welcome here. This is Kathy. I just have, I have a question before. Gretchen, can you remind us what, what have we been asked to do? Yeah, I would be happy to. So the mayor reached out to our Human Rights Commission to ask for comments, advice related to putting together some sort of statement. You know, there's a couple of options of statements. There's proclamations and resolutions. And so he was asking here if there's advice as you think about Salem, you know, and the people in Salem. Um, one of the things the Human Rights Commission is tasked with is um, harmonious intergroup relations. And that's built into our code. And so trying to think about the, the peoples of Salem and what words um, would be your advice to share with him as he considers a statement. So that's that's what you were asked to, to do. And so it's super helpful that um, folks have been able to share their perspectives both in conversation this evening as well as in writing. You know, you all in your packet received a number of written comments as well. Um, and then we also shared um, examples of documents from other communities. I think the city of Seattle, the city of Eugene, and then Multnomah County were examples of documents that were shared, um, just to provide you with some example content. And so, Kelsey, I don't know if you want to, I do you want me to jump into kind of an approach for the conversation or would you like to do that? Um. I think if you want to go ahead and do that, maybe you have an idea about how best to structure this. You bet. Yeah, I'm working on some notes. You might remember um, we thought we could begin by um, chart packing any key impressions or themes that are coming to your mind as you've listened and read um, and then start move, you know, kind of at the beginning, have it be very open brainstorm where kind of there's no wrong answer. Let's just get some ideas onto a piece of paper and then start circling back and checking in to see what's rising, what people might have objection to and kind of move that way. The Human Rights Commission traditionally has welcomed participation from guests into the discussion. Um, I'm hearing Kelsey say she wants to be sure to hear from the commission members. And so we want to be sure to anchor your ability as well to communicate, but I know um, traditionally you've been interested in engaging with community members as you engage in your discussions and deliberations as well. Um, so we can, keep, we can keep an eye, like you said, on trying to help everyone be heard in the conversation. And then um, like your questions 
your discussion questions might include. We've gotten some comments about whether to make a statement. So if anybody wanted to reflect on that, Ele comments on what elements would you advise? What are some key components? Um, and then we'll go back and start to facilitate towards any elements that might be able to be a recommendation that you could make a motion in a second and a vote on. How, how does that sound? It was kind of a lot of words. I'm sorry, I didn't simplify that better. But basically we'll open it up for discussion. We'll include everyone, but we wanna be sure the commissioners have a chance to share. And then we'll start, we're going from brainstorm to focus. And Kelsey, we have a hand here on the road. Okay, uh, perfect. Thank you, yeah. go ahead. Just a point of information. Um, so does that mean that when, that you're gonna discuss at the end, whether to make it a proclamation versus a resolution? Is that? You, the, the commission could choose to get into that discussion or not. That's, that's a good question. Would like that. Sure. So for those of you who might not be tracking, there's, there is a difference in the type of statements that cities make. And so I think what I'm hearing is there's interest in, um, having part of that discussion be the type of statement. A proclamation is a statement made by a mayor that is proclaimed. And so it doesn't require a vote of the council, whereas a, a resolution is something that is voted on by the members of the mayor and council. And so to pass, you need a majority in order to pass that resolution. And yeah, there's been some comments at previous city council meeting about valuing a resolution because it anchors the votes of each of the wards of the city and all nine of the elected officials into that statement, if I've captured that correctly. So it sounds like there's community interest in if the commission had a, a view on proclamation versus resolution. And I can, Lieutenant Dowd's gonna be a good dance partner with me. I'm gonna capture notes on this post-it chart back here to try to help. But I recognize the challenges of a hybrid environment too. Can we help you if I move this closer to you? Um, I think I wanted to keep it here, okay. if you don't mind. But no, I'm just gonna, mind. I'm basically gonna bounce like okay. this a little I'll bit. Stay back you and thank you both for your patience with me as I do that. So I don't know if there's come. Oh, I see Laura. Kelsey, go ahead. All right, Laura. Hi. Um, I had some initial thoughts as I was listening. Uh, one thing that I think is important from my view um, as a commissioner on the Human Rights Commission is, is that we really, I think we, we should include strong language about um, uh, discriminate, you know, not, how do I want to say this? Um, about not discriminating against people in our community, protecting all the people in our community, um, regardless of, you know, of, of what type of discrimination it, it would be. Uh, so that's that's what I, I just feel like that is um, central from my view is is protecting the people in the city of Salem and standing up for their rights. Thank you, Laura. Um, Lisa, and then we'll go in person if anyone in person has comment. Thanks, Kelsey. So. Um, I feel very much like what Laura was expressing. Um, I think that from the mayor's position, the language that we need to portray is the harmony and the peace for the citizens of Salem. And um, if the mayor needs help with drafting some language, I can come up with some, but I know that words are very powerful and impactful. And this is a horrible mm -hmm. situation. There's no, in my personal opinion, there's no no one innocent here except for the Palestinian and Israeli citizens themselves. They did not cause this. But I think from the mayor's standpoint, 
and the purpose of a proclamation or a resolution, whichever is decided on, needs to be in a positive light, promoting peace and harmony for all citizens of the city of Salem. And um, again, if, you know, if the mayor would like us to draft the commission to draft language, we can do that as well. So those are my feelings, my position. Thank you, Lisa. Um, anyone in person have a comment? Yeah, I'll get it started. Yeah. Um, where to begin? Um, the, the rabbi today and um, folks in writing asked a question, why make a statement? What does it matter? It's far away. And I think we've heard a lot of evidence for why it matters, but I'd like to just take a moment to say that um, whatever words the mayor or council say will not stop missiles falling on playgrounds as they did this morning, killing half a dozen kids. They will not stop or return one and a half million Gazans to their homes that have been displaced since October 7. And they will not feed the hundreds of thousands that are going to die from starvation. And not let to die, as our headlines often have us believe, but made to die by policies and laws and orientations that we subsidize as American taxpayers. So why make a statement? And that's because if we cannot imagine or articulate liberation or freedom, then we can't materialize it can't even put language to it. We can't ever make it happen. So in the same spirit that we have to promote harmony and the safety of others, I think we have to denounce things, which we do as part of the work that we do on the Women's Commission. We denounce acts of hate. And I can think of few greater acts of hate than the genocide that has been unfolding. And the occupation and the reign of horror that has been at play for three of my lifetimes and before. And that didn't start in 48. The British mandate was before 48. The Oslo Accords were in 99, again in 03 and 04. Area C is very much alive in the West Bank. So I think that we have to say what it is, which is a genocide. We are a human rights commission, which means that if we're about anything, it is the rights of humans. And you know, when you have 90% of homes destroyed, all 36 hospitals in the Gaza Strip bomb, some of them to the ground, 12 partially operational. I don't even know. I've lost count now how many are left. One, Jody says. I call it for what it is. If we cannot name things for what they are, we cannot begin to reconcile or promote harmony. And so I think that any conversation that we undertake here, and therefore any recommendation that we advance to council and mayor has to begin from that most fundamental and basic premise. So let's start there. <laughs> Thank you, Joaquin. Um, I I have a comment. Um, I wanted to just highlight a couple of things as I was reading through these public comments. Um, there were a couple of 
lines and statements um, specifically from Rabbi Ellie's um, public comment that I thought um, resonated with me. Um, there are some portions of this this statement that um, I don't fully agree with, um, but I think these ones, yeah, they really they resonated with me. So anyway, um, he says, one of the most difficult aspects to explain to people outside of my community is how it all hurts. Um, he talks about um, on October 7th, the silence and immediate dehumanization that the victims of the attack um, faced and how many in the um, Jewish community know someone who um, was killed or taken hostage. Um, he also says, at the same time, we have been tortured by the watching of, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, fascistic uh, Netanyahu government carrying out such a vicious campaign with a great deal of indiscriminate killing and graphic destruction while 2 million people are trapped inside of Gaza with nowhere to go. Um, some points for a statement that I want to highlight um, is that there should be mention of solidarity um, with both Jews and Muslims of Salem. Um to distinguish between the state of Israel and um, Israeli citizens, um, to address the brutal oppression of Palestinians um, by the Israeli government um, in the West Bank and Gaza, um, and the ongoing building of illegal and colonist uh, colonialist settlements in the West Bank. Um, and so I just wanted to highlight a couple of those, like those words and phrases kind of stuck with me. Um, and I know Rabbi Ellie is um, on the speakers list next. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to him. Before you do, Kelsey, I apologize. My brain didn't fire quickly enough. And I want to say back what I got on the chart pad. Yes, yes, of course. Um, it all hurts. Silence when those in Jewish hurt and then going on to the two million, just like all it all hurts. Mm -hmm. um, Jews and Palestinians and solidarity and colonial settlements. I didn't do a good job. Is there no. words you'd add to that? Um, not just uh like also um not just Palestinian solidarity, but um like our Muslim um neighbors and community members. Um and not on in this statement, but from my own, I think we would be uh, we have, would have a missed opportunity um, if we did not mention uh, the complicity um, and basically empowerment that the U.S. government has uh, provided um, is Israel, the Israeli government, um, in committing these horrific acts of genocide. Um, I think that needs to be in the statement as well. Thank you. Okay, sorry. I didn't mean to No, 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 no. Rabbi no. Ellie. Rabbi Ellie, if you want to go ahead and share. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um so I just want to say personally that I I feel like as as a as a visibly religious Jew in the room that many of you have just kind of come in the room assuming that I'm your enemy and that you need to stand up to me and push back. I don't know if I'm imagining that, but I'm just telling you that's how I'm feeling. And that sucks. Um especially because I'm basically on, on your team. Um, so that sucks. Um, I also want to say that every statement that has been made so far has utterly erased my people. You guys have erased us. You've erased our history. You've erased our pain, wow. our deaths. You've erased our oppression. You've erased the violence that we've experienced in the Middle East. Not one comment. Not one comment. What I'm telling you is I'm worried about cities making these kinds of statements when what you're gonna do is erase people in your city to do what you think is right over the top of peace and harmony within your city and to create situations where people in this city could be in danger because of how you have a particular view about what needs to be said and what needs to not be said and what needs to be called out and what not, you know, all that. The way this is conversation is going tonight, you have erased my people. 
Kelsey, there's a couple folks who want to talk in here. Is that um let's I know Zeke had their hand up. Um I wish I could make a speaker list. Um Gretchen, if you want to write down the names of people who want to make a comment, um, and we'll go through them from top to bottom. Um so let's move to Zeke and then we'll go in person. Okay. Hi everyone. I uh first point of information. Uh, I have unfortunately not been able to attend a meeting in a while. I was wondering if I'm still technically a commissioner or if I'm speaking as a member of the public. Member of the public, Zeke. Oh, did we just lose them? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. we just lost Zeke. We just lost Zeke. Um, if they log back on, we'll, uh, they'll be the next speaker up. So if we want to go ahead and move in person. Uh, Sabrina. Um, so I wanted to respond to a few things. Um, first one, um, you know, why is it important for us to make a statement? Because it's literally the very least we can do. This genocide is partially being funded by our tax dollars and specifically Salem residents too. Um, I don't know, also, I'm not sure why anyone could feel like calling for a genocide is somehow targeting them. It is the Palestinian people that are facing the genocide. It's Palestinian people whose homes and land has been completely destroyed in Gaza. It's Palestinian people who have 40,000 um, have been killed in the past few months. So I don't, I don't really care about your feelings, frankly. Like, I'm sorry, I don't mean to get, look, I, calling for an end to genocide, like, but that is offensive for you. I just, that just blows my mind, frankly. Um, I, it just, it, it's, it's really ridiculous. And honestly, I'm not, I'm not trying to be aggressive, but it, it is just frankly ridiculous. It's literally, this is a human rights commission and it's literally the least we can do is call for an end to this genocide. Like it shouldn't be complicated. It shouldn't, well, why on earth would anyone feel offended by that for, to call for a ceasefire, to call for an end to the killing? I support, you know, um, being the statement, um, you know, well, first of all, saying that we unequivocally, um, one, we support, you know, um, um, a ceasefire, two, we unequivocally call for an end to this genocide, and three, like, we are, like, in solidarity, like, you know, statements, like, we are in solidarity with, um, you know, Jews and Muslims, like, that's, that's not, none of that, that, that is not contradictory to what I, what I just said, previously. that's, so what I, I would suggest, um, that we call for a ceasefire, and to the genocide unequivocally, and, and also to make sure that call it what it is, it is a genocide. And then finally, um, I think it would be a good idea to, you know, also put um, forth language about, you know, um, I guess um, something that seems kind of hopeful and shows solidarity with um, Jewish and Muslims and all those who, you know, this is, um, um, a hard time. This is a hard time for. Gotcha. If I may, Thank you. Can we do Joaquin and then and then would that be okay? Thank you. Um. Yes. Um. I want to say just one thing. I think. Um. Let's just remember that as we are giving, um, as we are talking through this, that we're respecting everyone's, um, and that multiple things can be true. Um, so, I, well, I the rabbi has unfortunately left. Um, is that true that the rabbi's left? Yeah. Um, he didn't name me, but I addressed his question. And he he said he felt that way, so I would just respond. Uh, that hopefully he hears these words, which is um, uh, is important, I think, to all of us in this room to be kind of people centered explicitly people-centered, and I can't, um, I wouldn't wish to police the rabbi's 
pain or emotions. And I, I wish he were here to, to clarify his statement. I mean, he, um, he, uh, I don't feel like I retorted anything he said. I feel like I responded to something he brought up. Um, and I, I, I'd go so far as to say whose history is being erased. Um, uh, the Palestinian uh, community is a multi-religious community. Um, there are Palestinian Jews that have lived in Palestine for thousands of years. Um, long before uh, the, the uh, Zionist project. Uh, there are, believe it or not, still Palestinian Christians that are actively practicing their religion and who had to pray on Easter services while being bombed. So um, I, I would just, he's not, he's not here to respond, but I guess my question would be whose history uh, was being, being erased. Um, and I think that my comment, which I share with, with the words that you just shared, which is was, was more around just naming it as genocide. If we are to promote harmony in any capacity, we have to begin from a point of recognizing reality and it is a genocide. A genocide that is affecting Palestinian Muslims and Palestinian Jews and Palestinian Christians. And uh, I, that to me is not uh, erasing anybody. It's foregrounding uh, this this location of of human dignity, and that to me is a universal cause, not a not a personal or uh, factioned cause. Um, so I think any statement that we develop has to center that fact, um, and of course must center as well the realities that you know folk, there are inflamed emotions here, and, and things go back and forth and affect a multitude of communities and uh, part of the primacy of the role of this commission and by extension the council and the mayor is to protect those communities and their beautiful diversity. And you can't protect anybody if you're not acknowledging what's happening. So I guess I would just, he's not here to hear my words in response to that, but that is what I would say to him if he were here. And I hope he does hear that some other, some other time. Kelsey, I'd like to go to, a, there's a person who's been hoping to jump into the conversation here in the room. And yeah, we'll go to them and then Zeke. And then Zeke and, and, well, and then Zeke. And then if we can do a time check and clarify the goal. Absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. Thank you. Go ahead for your patience. Um, I think there's a lot of misconception that calling for a ceasefire and denouncing Zionism is the same as anti-Semitism. And I just think that's very wrong. And in fact, is anti-Semitic itself because it does erase Palestinian. Jews and just Jewish people of color. Um, I think Zionism is pretty dangerous. I've seen hate rallies. I've seen Nazis walk with Zionists on the Salem streets before with my own eyes. And so I think it's really important that with any statement that we make that these statements are not anti-Semitic, that we are not against Jewish people. And then in response to the rabbi, I know he's not here, but I think it's really, un I feel like when when he was saying I, I wasn't here in the first half, so I don't know to like what statements he was referring to, but listening to that, it like, how do I explain this? I felt like, um, why, why is he centering his feelings when there's a genocide? No one in here is being anti-Semitic. No one in here was hateful towards him. No one in here looked at him in that way. And I think it's really unfair to paint us, those of us who advocate for Palestine as villains, when that's just simply not it. Um, Zeke, welcome back. If you want to go ahead and go. Yes, thank you so much. I'm so sorry. I My laptop died as soon as that happened earlier um so i guess just in my capacity as a member of the public and i just want to add another voice to the conversation um i'm also jewish uh i uh helped lead the jewish student union at willamette university um i have a very different view to rabbi ellie i have extreme respect for the rabbi i have interacted with him personally um but ultimately I think there is nothing more Jewish than standing 
uh, with our fellow uh, members of the human fa family in Jewish terms, B'nai Noach. Uh, and we are commanded in the Torah not to stand by their blood. Um, the actions that the state of Israel is currently undertaking are deeply contrary to all sorts of Jewish law, the Rambam's prohibition on sieges, uh, the commandment that you shall love the neighbor in your land as though it were yourself. Um, there is nothing more Jewish than standing against genocide. Uh, and those are the terms that I think the evidence bear out. Um, if we want, the Jewish perspective is not a monolith. There is not one thing that all Jews who are perceiving this conflict think. Uh, not all Jews uh, support uh, the state of Israel. Not all Jews support the use by the state of Israel of Jewish suffering as a cover for its genocidal actions. Um, absolutely, anti-Semitism has increased dramatically uh, since... October the 7th, as has Islamophobia. Uh, a child was killed uh, for no other reason than being Palestinian in America. Many other incidences, incidences at college campuses in Connecticut. Uh, and there are, are absolutely many incidences of anti-Semitism, too numerous to go through. Both of them are serious problems and are not acceptable but neither of them are related to fundamentally what is occurring in Gaza at this time. Uh, the When we speak of genocide, we're not speaking about uh, a hypothetical. We're not speaking about, you know, a term of political rhetoric. We're speaking about a well-defined term that exists in international law in the Rome Statute. Um, and I, I, I don't think it's possible to comprehensively examine the facts as they exist and come to a conclusion other than that that the use of that term is very well supported uh, as a matter of international law. And as a matter of Jewish law, like I was saying, there's a serious reason to doubt uh, Israel's assertion that it is fulfilling Jewish self-determination as it claims to do in its basic law. Um, I, we have an obligation in Salem that transcends national boundaries, that transcends geography, to stand with those who need our support. And the fact is, as people in America, we have extreme influence on what happens in that part of the world. We have extreme influence on the doubling of the Israeli military budget that has occurred um, through allocations by the United States Congress with our tax money. We have influence on the rhetoric and the dehumanization of Palestinians that exists alongside the dehumanization of Jews that it has unfortunately manifested since October the 7th. And before, certainly. And ultimately we have an obligation to protect those of us across the world that most need support and that most need to be spoken out for. The obligation to address this as a genocide and to call for representation to seriously affect our deeply felt concern about the situation and to not continue and prolong this conflict is a question of whether the children in Gaza should have the same right to life and the same right to experience joy that children here in Salem should have. If you would not accept an invasion in your own backyard, if you would not accept an IDF bomb destroying Salem Health or your place of worship, why would you accept it in Gaza? Thank you, that's all. Thank you, Zeke. Um, Kelsey, any... I'd, I'd like to check in with you about uh, seeing where the commissioners are in terms okay. of process uh, we, since our meeting technically expires at eight o'clock. Yes. Um, are you wanting um, to put this to a vote, whether we make a, whether 
there's a statement or a proclamation? We can do that. I'd also like clarity from the commissioners in terms of what the contents they would like to see included in whatever it may be that it is that we vote on. Um, okay. Just so that we all arrive at a place of understanding before the okay. meeting closes. Okay. Um, go ahead, Gretchen. I, I have, I could propose an example motion unless somebody else is already there. Is a member of the commission already there? Well, if you wouldn't mind going over it uh, just for our just understanding. And then I would remind the commissioners that they have provided three examples of language yep. um, that they should have been able to see in advance. Yeah. Um, to, to facilitate conversation. Did you do you happen to have copies? I can pull up on my phone. I have a set right here. here. Yeah. <laughs> One approach would be for someone to make a motion that that would say that the commission recommends the following concepts be included and then list all of these on the chart pack, which I can read. And then to comment on proc Lamation versus resolution, which you I haven't heard comment on yet, so I didn't want to jump into from you all. And I could read through the comments that we have on the chart pack as as kind of the base of the content, if that sounds. Uh, strong language to not discriminate against all people in our Salem. Harmony and peace for people in Salem. Denounce act of hate that began historically. Gen say what it is, a genocide. It all hurts, the silence hurts for all of the moments when there's tragedy. Calling for solidarity for Jews and Palestinians and Muslim neighbors and everyone. A comment about the colonial settlements. Concern for complicity and the funding that we contribute as speaking to the importance of needing to act supporting a ceasefire and making sure the language is person-centered is what I think I heard so far. Um, and then I need a comment on ceasefire. We've got a couple hands in the audience. I don't know, Kelsey, if you wanna. Um, the, the me, the Kelsey me wants to say yes. <laughs> let's, let's hear the, the vice chair in me uh, says we have three-fourths of our agenda to get through um if we could if you want to make a statement in like 15 seconds sure, i'll do that okay we've got Inan. um i just want to echo um what key uh, with what Keen, that palestinians are a multi-faith community and our cause is calling for a ceasefire an end to a genocide and for a completely free and liberated palestine this will in turn bring peace and equality to all the people and I want to say that a statement for harmony and solidarity can be important, but it must be alongside strong, truthful, and productive language. We've heard general statements of solidarity way too many times, and every single one of us is directly involved with the genocide because it is our tax dollars. So those are great, um, but it feels like we're kind of skirting around. Does the inclusion of genocide and a ceasefire and the saying what it is elements get to your point or are there still like you said the palestinian like state maybe component is missing the what the palestinian state component that's for sure missing um and then i think that i can see that it, for it to be comfortable it's going to kind of be centered around a statement of, of um you know the harmony and solidarity which will kind of encompass everything without really having to say what it is and I just want to make sure that we're clear here that that is not what we're um exactly looking for yeah right I um, think I I don't think I heard that just in the interest okay. of time I think I'm hearing the inclusion of say what it is ceasefire genocide we have to build in strongly those pieces in and addition that's, to okay. statements I kind of what Sabrina said earlier about it's not they're not mutually exclusive right. to each other we yep. can we cannot want discrimination or disharmony in Salem, and we can also make strong statements about this. Yes, I think what I'm hearing. I okay. think what she's saying is the focus should. Sorry, oh, go ahead. The focus should be the ceasefire, and in addition, should be the rest of the stuff, not the other way around, like you said. 
Okay. Oh, forgive me. I was just going in the order that they well, were yeah, presented. Yeah, no but you're you're yeah. suggesting that order. Got if it. I may, I don't think for our guests. I don't think we've arrived at an order. And we're yeah. Exactly. We're yeah. just getting okay. getting on uh, a discussion, uh, catalog, and and a mutual understanding of what we're talking about. I'm wondering if it might be um, a good idea to for commissioners <laughs> to vote on a proclamation, a statement. Or none of the above is are those our three options? Resolution. Resolution, statement, and then none. Those are our three options. That's a good idea. And I could also okay. comment if you'd like to pen your remaining agenda topics to the next meeting. That might help everybody too. We yeah. might have to. Well, yeah. We might have to. Uh let's let's uh, vote. Um, because if like commissioners, if we vote to say none, then that's oh, good that's point. the vote. Good point. Um Okay. Um, commissioners, all those in favor of... I'm sorry, can we have a little bit of discussion? Oh my gosh, I yes, of course. So Happy. my understanding, so we're, we're making a recommendation to the mayor yes. of whether he should make a proclamation or whether a resolution should be brought before the council for a vote. Is that... Or a third or, choice, Kelsey, or, which is do we, we recommend that they do that. So we're, we're not, we're well, not, not to introduce chaos, right. Kelsey, but I would like us to vote first on the contents of what we're saying. So I, I want us to be clear about what we're saying. It's a genocide. We're calling for an immediate and permanent ceasefire and promoting all everything else we've all discussed. First, I, I'd like us to all, I mean, we, there, there can be conversation and debate among commissioners, and I'm open to that. But I would like us to all be on that page first before we get into the nature of the statement. Does okay. that feel wonderful to my colleagues? So you're wanting yes. content, like approved content, and then I feel ill-equipped to vote on the nature of a statement without knowing the statement's contents. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Great. Um, Laura Leaf, and then we'll... we've got someone in the room too. Okay. 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 Yeah, my, I'll just my comment will be really quick. I just wanted to suggest specific wording. Um, perhaps we can say, um, you know, we unequivocally condemn this ongoing genocide against Palestinians and call for an immediate ceasefire. I think that would be a great first sentence. And then the next, you know, um, and then after that, I think it would also be great to make a point about, you know, um, you know, solidarity, solidarity with Jews, Muslims, and all those that uh, feel affected by uh, the current situation. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, sorry, yeah. I'm just reacting to what you're saying. So, just for clarity, um, oftentimes the way that formal statements are made is, especially in the ones that are provided to us in advance, is there's they invoke like values in city law or statute, in our case, SRC, uh, whatever it may be. And then we arrive at a now, therefore, and then there's a section of whatever it can look like. So just so they're all on the same page in terms of um, how that might look in a final form. Though I'm not making any comments the way it looks like. It's not my decision to make. But. Yeah, so are you saying it's like a because of this, therefore, we resolve to do this? I'll briefly give an example. So, for example, for, for the Eugene City Council, there's A through G, you know, all human life is precious, targeting civilians. Uh, no matter their faith or ethnicity is a violation of international human rights. That's, that's item A. Now, therefore, be resolved that. And then there are three resolutions that they make, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Robert, you had your hand up. Yeah, I was going to say that when we're, uh, you know, in, in talking about this and, you know, some of the language, that we should be clear that we're denouncing um, the Israeli government, the military, and then foreign governments supporting, funding, and fueling the genocide in Gaza. And that we're not that we're not saying that we're condemning Israel, because I feel like doing so, as the rabbi was saying, I think we're condemning the entire population of Israel. And it is not the Israelis' fault that we have invaded Gaza and that we are carrying out these attacks on Palestine, but that is the government. So you're saying actions Robert, and the military and those foreign entities that are supporting. So you, you want it named. Netanyahu and the leadership of Israel in particular, as opposed I don't, to we don't have to name names, but I'm just saying that no, we, we shouldn't say that we're you know condemning Israel. 
and now we're but we're condemning the government and the military and the foreign governments. Clarifying not the entirety of yeah, all of the like people, not the country, but the decision but yeah. makers. Yes. In that. Yeah. Not the people. Yeah. Yes. I agree with Robert. Yeah, not the people, but the governments. We have a lot of hands up. I want to <clears throat> check if how do you want to work a time conversation? There's a lot to unpack in all of these concepts, and I'm checking to see how you want to do you want to end discussion and move to some votes of clarity? Do you want to extend the meeting for a length of time and continue discussion? What's the pleasure of the commission? Um, I'm, I'm wondering, do commissioners feel ready to vote on content and or what sort of action we're going to take? I feel ready. I'm good. I guess I should ask, does anyone feel not ready to vote on either content or action? I guess I have a process question. We're, we're talking about, I mean, is it going to come back to us to see how it actually looks in writing? Does that make sense? I mean, we're, we're voting on content here, but... That's different than being on the actual pages that are going to be yeah. prepared. We could do that, but it would cause a delay. Yeah. One of the things that that we're aware of is the urgency that's yeah. been expressed about making yeah. this statement. So theoretically, we could have a conversation, write something up, come back at our next meeting, you know, edit Wordsmith, but then that would delay yeah. to the... So another idea would be to come to what you can say tonight and then move that forward so mayor and council have that information for an action more quickly. Isn't it also true that we could have a special meeting next week? You could. You could choose to hold an additional meeting next week, come back and review the concepts, and then that would be a delay by a week as opposed to a month, for example. You could. So there's a few choices there for you to consider. So in all transparency, my my I would like us to have leave this room understanding what we are asking city council and mayor to commit to and in what form. And if we would prefer to have actual language to hand to Mayor Hoy and say we'd like you to vote on this, that is to say beyond just concepts and commitments. If that is the commission's preference, then I think we should uh, meet again in a week once that language is drafted. Mm -hmm to vote on that language as well. But I would like, uh, out of respect to obviously the, the crisis that, that's alive and at play also for our guests and for ourselves as commissioners, I would like to understand what we're walking away, committing ourselves. Yeah, so more precisely than like the words on the chart have, just to confirm. Yes. And I also, Kelsey, um, just out of respect for time, I, I, I would be okay staying longer, but I also would love to have a conversation within the commission between the commissioners to really understand so we can move forward with language. Mm -hmm. Yes, I I am I want to at least have a understanding of what commissioners are thinking before we adjourn. So would that mean then that you'd want to see if commissioners here this evening have additional comments? Yeah, I think if any commissioners want want to share any last comments, questions, concerns regarding either content that we are um, proposing that the mayor uses um, and or if an action is taken. This is David, I have, I have a question. When we say ceasefire in Gaza, we're talking about both parties, right? Because mm -hmm. there's been twice where there's a ceasefire on Israel's side and Hamas hasn't done it. So I think you'd clarify as you'd like a ceasefire by all parties yeah. in the language. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I think an immediate and permanent ceasefire um, involves all parties, uh, but yeah. if it is the wish of the commission to be explicit and name that. It's fine, but I think, I think it, yeah. I agree with Joaquin. Um, 
I think it means all parties. Um, and we also need to clarify that it, this is not uh, Palestinians. This is Hamas um, and the Israeli government and IDF. Um, Leaf and then uh, Lisa and then Kelsey, if you're calling on guests, we've got other guests in the room interested oh in connecting okay. as well. So um, just so you're aware. Okay, sorry. Um, let's do. But Lee has had their hand up for quite some time. We wanted to acknowledge that. Leaf and then in person, then Lisa. Sorry, I couldn't. <laughs> my mic would not unmute. Um, uh, thanks so much. Um, just wanted to clarify. I've got a couple degrees in political science. Um, the word ceasefire does intrinsically inherently mean both sides. Um, and, uh, and I also just want to, um, you know, bring up the concept or just kind of make sure it's acknowledged or included in the statement that like, you know, as, as U.S. citizens, like we're not coming, we're not approaching this from a place of neutrality, right? Like where, where we're just looking in on some sort of international issue and saying, well, you know, um, both sides should be doing this, you know, and, and we can say that as a neutral party, right, that, that we have some acknowledgement that part of the part of our responsibility to make a statement right now is as a result of the fact that we are bankrolling one side of the violence. Um, and yeah, just just an acknowledgement that, um, you know, that is part of our responsibility to speak on this. And it's also something that's harming our community, you know, um, that, that our community is not only, you know, the kind of psychological harm of seeing that, you know, in the last day, um, 10 kids were blown up in a targeted attack on a playground, um, and living with that knowledge. <laughs> um, but just also that, you know, then, then that loss of, of tax dollars, you know, for our community, um, and that, the funds that are going towards violence could instead be used to fund our library, for example, you know, um, things like that. So, um, yeah, I don't know if it's possible to include um, something in the statement just about part of what we condemn is the use of us um, as U.S. citizens um, being, you know, being made complicit um, monetarily in this. Thanks. Thank you, Leif. Um, let's do in person and then Lisa. All right. Um, I would like to just add to all of this. Um, we really, I think it would, I think I'm speaking on behalf of all of the, pretty much all the guests in the room here, uh, that we would really appreciate that uh, the fluff be at least cut down. Um, like we understand you got to go through the motions of, oh, you know, something something please don't smear us in the media at the end of the actual statement but like please do keep the ceasefire uh and the uh, condemnation of the israeli state uh enacted genocide on gaza as the forefront uh and if we could please get like a vote at least on the condemnation of the genocide before ending this meeting that'd be really cool because at least then people can walk away with some sense that uh there's a commitment in this room Um, I'd also like to add, uh, upon reviewing Seattle's resolution, um, one thing that it also needs to be mentioned, though genocide is a legal term and has legal uh, entanglements, uh, but Israel's a violation of international law. That that isn't we haven't named that yet explicitly. So bringing that up, and also. Um, Asking for uh, um, see the, oh, there's a line in the Seattle resolution which I'll read in full. It says, "Whereas hundreds of thousands of lives are at imminent risk without an immediate law, ceasefire restoration of basic necessities, the liberty of adequate demand for an aid without the labor of the Palestinian people is one of the best that the city of Seattle makes, which I also like to see included in our language, especially since." Biden is so eager to build a port. 
Gaza for aid, we might as well use it. Um, uh, in the room. Um, okay. Lisa, I'm sorry, you have your hand up. I was going to give it back to you, Kelsey, but Lisa. No, you're good. Lisa. Thanks. Um, at this juncture, my feeling is there's a lot of discussion. And uh, Gretchen had mentioned that we could have a meeting in a week. What my suggestion at this juncture is a work session with the human rights commissioners. And we dis vote on the content then. That's what I suggest at this time. Lisa, uh, are you proposing a motion to establish a work group? Let's do that. Okay. I move. I move to establish a work group with the commissioners next week, and we'll vote and decide on the final content and offer written suggestions to the mayor. Okay. All right. Second. Is there a discussion to that, Kelsey. Uh, it's been seconded, so we'll move into discussion. So, Joaquin. So, Lisa, I, I am very open to that. I agree that this requires more kind of more discussion, especially because we want to get the language right, and I don't think we can get it right in the next two minutes. <laughs> that being said, I would like, as I mentioned earlier, for us to walk away from this conversation with some direction and clarity, namely, naming it as a genocide, naming that it is in violation of international law and calling for an immediate and permanent ceasefire. I want everyone, I, my preference would be for everyone to walk away from this conversation, knowing that those three things will be included in the statement. Do you? Do we kind of fall with at least that, independent of the other language that may come um, in the statement come next week? So maybe yeah, I, I agree with that, yeah. Uh, two points of process. The first one would be we could take the motions one at a time. We could do the motion that Lisa had and then do the motion that Joaquin had and make sure both get voted on. A second point of clarification would be that um, it, the word work session in the city language, often that means a discussion, um, but there's no actions taken at work sessions. Um, and I'm hearing that you'd want to be able to vote as well. And so I would change that to a meeting. And of course, mm -hmm. all of our meetings Sorry. are open to the public, but you don't have to have public comment. You can you can focus the conversation at the meeting, but it's certainly open for the public to view. So just to clarify that. Thank you, Gretchen. Yeah, okay. of course. Let's so make it a meeting then. Yeah, yeah. So if you wanted to take Lisa's, Lisa moved and Laura seconded, and you could vote on that and then move to Joaquin's concept, if that sounds good. Okay. Um, so we're going to move so, into a vote for... Can we still discuss for, ask clarifying questions of what we're voting on, please? So yes. will you, will you write up or send out something for us to yes have before yes. our next meeting so yes. that we can be thinking of and proposing? I certainly will. I okay, yeah. and uh, to Lisa's motion, could it also include because we already have our committee meeting scheduled for next Wednesday, and Kel Kelsey is the chair of one, I'm the chair of the other. I'm I, I don't need that time, I'd rather be dedicated to this. So, perfect, yeah. And that's a big thing, Kelsey, because we have the committee belonging survey that we're getting out this month. So, come on now. <laughs> Uh, we we didn't meet last month, um, so we, I think the LGBTQ we need a little bit of time, um, but not a lot of time. So we could meet at like six thirty, six twenty, six ten. All right. So okay. So I don't know what that means. I'll just say that <laughs> I will give. <laughs> I will give my hour, our hour. The committee's yeah, not higher hours. <laughs> our hour to that conversation. And I'm hearing Kelsey will give half an hour. So the proposal would be that the commission will meet next Wednesday from six thirty to eight p.m. Great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Here. <laughs> for, yeah. For okay. the purpose of, for working, the purposes on of working on this. Right. Yes. Okay. So you've got a motion and a second to have a meeting next Wednesday from yes. 6.30 to 8 that would give the commission a chance to work on this. 
but it's mm -hmm. a meeting. It's a meeting. Um, are there any questions about this uh, proposal or discussion about this proposal? We're about the the meeting. All right. Seeing none, let's move into a vote. Um, all those in favor of having a meeting next Wednesday, starting at six thirty. Talk more about this. Uh, raise your hand or say aye. Aye. Hello, aye. aye. Um, all those uh, opposed, say nay. Beautiful. All those abstaining, beautiful. All right. So we're meeting next week. So now, do you want to do you want to make a motion about the like the ceasefire, the international law, or yeah, yeah? Um, <laughs> I move that we adopt uh, a, a permanent, an immediate and permanent ceasefire. A um, I'm losing track of what I was saying. Gretchen. Oh, international violation of international law. And what was the third one? I can't remember. It's a long meeting, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Does not reflect my commitment to this issue. I'm forgetting. Uh, so, genocide, uh, uh, violation of international law, and a, a, a medium permanent ceasefire will be in the language that we recommend to council no matter what happens on Wednesday. That is our commitment as of the close of this meeting. Mm -hmm. Including but not limited to. Including but not limited to. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? Seconded. Second. All right. <laughs> it has been motioned and it's been moved and seconded. Um, any questions or discussion around that motion? All right. Seeing none, let's move into a vote. Um, all those in favor of adopting that language, including but not limited to, um, moving forward, um, raise your hand or say aye. 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 All right. Can all you, those. Can you see your hands? I'm, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, all those opposed? Raise your hand and say nay. All those abstaining? All right. Okay. So that has passed. Um, so moving forward, we will adopt that language, um, including but not limited to, um, in whatever action we decide to move forward with. Um, any other things laying on the table? Uh, yes, I'd like to thank our guests. Oh my goodness, yes. Um, i incredibly appreciative to each and every one of you, um, those who came, those who left, um, those who spoke, those who didn't speak. Um, thank you for being passionate about um, any issue that is impacting our world and our communities. Um, you're more than welcome to always come back. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, commission members, is there anything on the agenda that you feel we need to get to? Uh, Kelsey, uh, since the lieutenant's here, should we go over the bias crimes? I think there's three. Ab of them. Absolutely. Three. Yeah. Um, if everyone's okay with that, if we want to go ahead and move forward to the bias crime report. And then we'll close the meeting. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then okay. there'll be the vice president's report and then can adjourn the meeting. All on. right. That sounds good. Go ahead. No. No, I'm good. Every, and everybody can hear my voice. I know that. I get told that all the time. All right. Um, so, two uh, bias crimes, one bias incident. One of them was on April 1st, but I figured I would include it because it was before this meeting. So on the 16th of March in Northeast Salem, there was graffiti uh, in one of the parks that would apparently be in response to uh, what happened at Bush Park. Uh, and it was, uh, the graffiti was on one of the um, park signs there. Uh, and it said, uh, I miss my homie, F word and then N word. Um, there's no workable leads on that. It occurred overnight and was reported the following day. Um, and so there was, nobody saw the perpetrator. There's no descriptions, anything like that to uh, follow up on. On the 27th of March uh, in Northeast Salem, 
it's kind of a unique story. I'll try to keep it as vague as possible for the sake of anonymity, but there's a person that uh, is responsible for uh, maintenance and cleanup of a property in Northeast Salem. And this person saw uh, an individual walking their dog uh, and the dog um, went to the bathroom in, on the property that this person is responsible for. And so this person confronted the dog owner uh, and the dog owner left. And then this person saw the dog owner uh, again later in that same day at a different location and tried to confront the dog owner once again about their dog doing their business. And the person um, shouted out a derogatory term uh, for Hispanic people and then ran off. So it was just an utterance uh, of a derogatory term uh, and then ran off. So there wasn't a crime uh, in that sense. And then on the first, um, I swear I, this was in Northwest, but I showed Northeast on my chart here, but I, I recall this one on the, uh, being in Northwest, but uh, people woke up in the morning to a swastika uh, drawn on a utility box outside the home of a resident uh, who's a German national person. And so the, the, I guess this person has uh, been a victim of um, bias crime similar to this in the past, but they reported it, um, but there was no cameras or anything on that circumstance either. We responded out, um, made note of the, the graffiti and then had it removed. So that's all I have uh, up to today's date. The reports come out weekly, so uh, there were no none for this week in particular. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments about the vice crime report? My only question is the one I have to ask, Lieutenant, which is do we have an update on the DOJ data for Salem? I have to ask. <laughs> Debbie's in Alabama, but as okay. of, as of uh, last Friday when I sat with her, she has not gotten a response. Okay. And I do have, uh, it's probably not very helpful uh, answers to the questions that Robert asked at the last meeting, but we can, we're more than welcome to save that or we can talk we can dive offline. Into, we can dive into it next, next month. Okay. Yeah. Did you be able to find out anything about that gas station that was not selling? Propane to based on housing status. Kathy asked me about an update. We I received a complaint that related to housing status and not selling product um, due to housing status. Had a strong conversation um, to the ex clarifying that that's not legal in our code, and received commitment to ensure that that's not happening or will stop happening. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. Um. Well, this was a jam-packed meeting. Um, any questions or last minute comments before we adjourn? Okay, seeing none, I hope everyone has a good night. Get home safely.